backward. We're going to take a look at what we had last time, and we are going to build on it. All right. So, um, if you remember last time, we did a, a simple form processing um, script in PHP where we took um, a, a dollar amount and converted it to pounds. So we're going to extend that today and, and do like euros and yen and, and stuff like that. And uh, then we'll expand it and, and go from there. Remember, processing form data is one of the big jobs of uh, server-side scripting because the, the server has the resources typically to do with what you need to do with the form. In other words, if you place an order, there's a database that needs updated. All right, well, the server has the resources to do that. If we were doing this for real, if we were doing a real live currency conversion, instead of just Googling the numbers for that were true that minute, we would probably have some uh, something that we connected to to get live real time values for these different exchange rates. So, and again, that's something that the server would have. So we're going to sort of fake it out by just having the code uh, hard coded the values in. But again, as you're seeing this, imagine that it could be more elaborate than this. And therefore, it is something that deserves to be on the server. The server's responsible for the heavy lifting in preparing uh, a web page, whereas the client side scripting is responsible for little tweaks to the appearance, little things that can be done like validation that can be done simply on the client side and is a win-win for everyone. So let's go and let's first of all start looking at what we have, what we had rather from last time and then we'll build upon it. about where we put the stuff with PHP, all right? We can't simply double click on the file and work. Or like in this case, we have the HTML file. Even though there's, this is an HTML file, we can't click on this, enter a value, and then hit submit. Doesn't do its thing, right? Why? Because we're just accessing the file, the raw file. We're not processing it through the server. Remember that a server-side script is like a recipe. It's instructions to create a web, a web page. And therefore, it needs to be run through a server for it to work and to produce the kind of web page that, um, that, that, that is, is designed to make. So we're going to put this in the web server's root directory. Now, in this particular machine, the web server's root directory is... In the folder C, inetpub, www.root. And that is where the web server is set up by default in with Microsoft's uh, IIS. I'm going to clear out the stuff that's already there so we can start out clean here. And then I'm going to move, I'm going to move my stuff in here. Now again, just because of the goofy security on these machines, um, it's warning me that um, I don't have permission. So I will tell it, yeah, go ahead and move all of them over. All right, so this is in CINETPUB WW root, and that is the web server's home directory. So the way I access this page, is I, uh, these pages, is I give the web server's name, which is localhost, 
or 127.0.0.1. Both of those mean the same thing. And then I give slash the path to the file that I want. Well, in this case, it's right in the root. So I do slash form.html, and that is the actual page. So localhost slash form.html and there we have my page. But remember, now we are not directly opening up that page from disk. We're asking our web server. We're asking our local web server to pull it up. And so now I go in and type in 100 US dollars is the same as 65 pounds. All right. So let's go in and let's do a couple more. Let's look up the conversion rate for yen and euros. One dollar equals 0.9 euro. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, I saw that. That was probably, that was funny. funny. Let's see what it says. It's a phrase. It's a phrase, um, dollars to donut. Yeah. It's not an actual Yeah, not an actual that money. Yeah. I, that, that's like an old, old time uh, 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 phrase. It, it's kind of like saying, I'll give you really good odds. In other words, I'll put a lot of dollars on and I'll, all you have to do is put up a donut as, as, as bet. So euro is 0.9, yen is one dollar equals 119.56 yen. All right, so let's go in and let's change our process um, file to output the amount in yen and in um, and in dollars and in euros and in all that stuff. Well, um, not necessarily all at once, but we're gonna, we'll play around a little bit with the way that this is outputted. Now here's something that is important to note with PHP is that, as I said before, PHP is a mix, PHP files typically are a mix of plain old HTML and CSS and JavaScript and PHP code. Now, you can put the PHP code smack dab anywhere you want, all right, which is good in a way, but it also can be very confusing, all right, and it can make for very hard to read stuff. So, we're going to go and I'm first going to go and do the calculation and then I'm going to maybe clean it up a little bit and do the output as, as a table. And then we'll look at like maybe how we can write cleaner PHP code versus how we can write um, um, harder to read PHP code. Okay, so I'll go in and I'll say, Euros equals point nine dollars and yen equals whatever that number was, a hundred nineteen one nineteen fifty six. Now again, notice at this point we've just done the calculation. We haven't outputted it. So if we ran this now, in fact, let's go and do that. If we go and run this now, we don't get any different output. Why? Because we did the calculation, we just didn't tell it to share the results of the calculation. So. How do you share the results of the calculation? Well, you can do it via an echo. Well, 
we'll see that in a second. Because I'm going to do this, and it's kind of going to be good, but it's kind of not going to be good. All right, so there we go. Let's go and save this. And let's go and type in 100. $100, same as 65 pounds. $100, same as 90 euros. $100. Eh, it's not very formatted very well. All right. Well, what could we do with this? Well, most simplistic way to deal with this is that we could put each one in its own paragraph. All right. So to answer your question, can you mix HTML tags and, and variables and literals in your echo? And the answer is absolutely. So I have to think about what I want to send to the browser. And in this case, what I want to send to the browser is a paragraph tag, this stuff, and then an end paragraph tag. Repeat that, please. Like, get rid of the two other echoes and just do paragraph and next slide. Because wouldn't it just echo at all? Like, wouldn't it just sound clear? Does that make sense? Um, I am not sure I understand what you're saying. Like, right now we have three lines of echo. Couldn't huh? we just do echo, write it all, and then end it instead of having yeah. three? Yeah. In other words... Could we go in and copy this and put it up here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could. Um, again, it becomes sort of a readability thing. Um, and there we have that. Now, what else would be a good way to probably present this? Um, what about giving them the option to choose what type of... Okay. That would, be, that would be a possibility to give them the option to choose which one. That would be, that would be one. In fact, let's, let's do that. I was going to do something else, but let's do that. Let's do this instead. Maybe, maybe, we'll, do, maybe we'll come back and do both. But um, let's go and let's give them the choice to how, to how to do that. What would we need to do to do that? To, to Pardon me? And what, we put radio buttons where? We put radio buttons here. All right. So let's go here and can edit my form. Now, again, do keep in mind that I'm not spending a lot of time on the appearance of the form. I, I trust you all can do that um, because I want to focus on the scripting aspect of it. So I'm going to go... Dollars. Say yen. Input type equals radio. Name equals. I know. I don't like that either. Uh, it, it confuses me for a second as well.
why um, from time to time, like, I'll just talk about doing things in Notepad. It's like, I, I, I probably can use all the help I can get, and I probably should appreciate it, but sometimes these editors, when they're, like, trying to help you, just, like, get in your way. Yeah. All right? So, at any rate, so I go and I'll, I'll do this. Notice they all have the same name. They have different values. By virtue of the fact that they all have the same name, then it's going to make them act as radio buttons. All right? I don't have an ID on it, but that's okay. I don't really need an ID in this case. I'm going to default to yen. I'll do that by the selected property. Just because I'm lazy and I don't want to deal with validation. That's not a good reason to default, but that's what we're doing today. All right. So now, we type in 100. We type in yen. We either select yen. We click this. It still does the same thing, right? Because we haven't done anything on the process script side to handle it. But do notice we got something passed on the, on the query string. We got passed our selection. And so if I pick euro, the currency is going to be a value of E. If I pick yen, the currency is going to be a value of Y. And if we pick pounds, the value is going to be a value of P. It's one of two things. If you can choose more than one radio button, then it's not a radio button group. There might be other radio buttons, or they're check boxes that look like radio buttons. Yeah. All right. So now let's go and let's do something in the processing script. And what I can do, I can do this any number of different ways. Um, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to put an if statement in here. If. This grabs it from the query string. If that equals E, Right. I'm going to go in after I do this and clean up the indenting of stuff. No, you're absolutely right. I put that in the wrong order. Yeah, you have to do the calculation before you output it. So now, if we go and do this, then it'll tell me just that. Okay? So that's one way to do it. And again, notice something here that the values from the form 
get put, in our case, on the query string because we've used the method of get on our form. All right. Notice that once it's on the query string, you really can't tell where it came from. In other words, I know that the, the dollars were in a text box and the radio button was for the currency type, but really, there's nothing that ties it to a radio button. I mean, this could have been a text box that had the, word, the letter E in it, and this could have been a radio button that had a value of 100 in it. All right? So when it gets to the server, it's no longer in a text box or in a drop-down or, or in a radio button. It simply is, you know, what, you know, it simply is, oh, how do I want to say it? Uh, it simply is um, just, data. just data. Yeah, the, 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 the name of the data and the value. All right, we're going to change this a little bit more. Okay, we have this going in. What if they want to pick two out of the three? All right. Or what if they want to pick all three? I'm going to give them the option of picking um, multiple values. Well, again, we can't use radio buttons for that, right? Because the radio button only allows us to pick one. We can use a checkbox, though. So let's go in and let's make this where that they can pick multiple things. So. checkbox. I'll give it a name of yen. Let's go and save this and let's look at the form we get. Now we have the ability to check multiple ones. All right. Now notice it blew up though. Why? Because I, I, I changed my HTML form and it did not change the um, it did not change, I did not change the script that does the processing. So, of course, it's looking for a radio button called currency, and I no longer have that radio button. So, of course, it's going to blow up. But what I'm interested in looking at is I'm interested in looking at the query string. Let's look at this close. Does anyone remember what I selected? I don't remember either but I can figure it out. Here's the query string. I selected yen and euros. How do I know that? Because that's what's on the query string. What is there for pounds on the query string? There's nothing. So checkboxes work a little differently than radio buttons or text boxes. Check boxes will appear on the query string if they were checked and will not appear on the query string if they were not checked. So in this case, yen and euros were. So I almost have a different test for this, right? And what value do they show? They show the value that I gave for it. So in other words, the Y indicates, yes, it was checked. If it isn't checked, though, I don't get um, a value of n or anything like that. It's just simply not there. So I need to use a different test, all right, to determine whether I've selected this or not. Because I can't say if pounds equals, or if pounds not equal to no, or I'm sorry, if pounds not equal to yes, because there is no query string variable for pounds. I would get an error, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the script 
And I'm going to say if is sat. And I'm going to look this up because it's been a while since I did any PHP coding. I want to make sure I have the spelling and the syntax. And it's a good thing I did, because it's not is underscore set, it's just one big word, is set. And I can say for this one, euros. does the two that I selected, yen and euros. If I select all three, it does all three of them. So, we can pull the value of a form variable off the query string, or in some cases we simply look to see if that variable is on the query string and we can look to see using the isSet method to determine whether it's on the query string or not. Now, this is okay and it's getting the job done and all that. Um, won't win any great design awards or anything like that. But, what I would suggest is that maybe we can do a little bit better by putting the results in a table, right? This sure sounds like a table of data, right? Um, and we could do this either way, I suppose, but let's have going on the top of the table, the currency type, and then underneath it, the value for it, okay? So, let's figure out how to do that. How do I do that? Now, I could do that a bunch of different ways. All right? And we'll play around with this. And, and first of all, I want you to make, make sure that you understand, regardless of the way I do it, why it works the way that it does. But the second thing I want you to see is that it can be done a couple different ways, and you do have the flexibility to make it work in a way that's as readable as you can. All right? So if I want a table, I probably want the table to look like this. This is what I want to send to the browser. I want to send table tag, and I want to send an end table tag. How many rows is my table going to have? It's always going to have two, right? So there's always going to be two TRs. How many columns are there going to be? It exactly. It depends how many we've selected. So there'll be anywhere from one to four. I guess we don't pick any. <laughs> we'll just say $100 is $100. All right. Um, again, we could work on the validation for that. But we could have one, we could have two, we could have three, or we could have four. So let's say that we've picked just yen, 
All right. Our table would look something like this. TH dollars. TH yen. And then TD, the amount in dollars, whatever we entered in. And then TD, whatever the amount was in the end. What does the D and TD stand for? Data. Table header or header or heading and table data. All right. So, some of these things we can hard code right in. We know that we're going to have two, two rows. We know that we need the table tag. We know that we need a TH for dollars and so on. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put those in my script. So how do I send to the browser a table tag? Echo. Echo. Of course, that's an end table tag because I was thinking ahead of myself. All right, and then we have, when we're all done, we, don't, we need to put an end table tag. All right. What else do we have? We have a TR. Is that always going to be there? Yep, sure will. So we'll go in here and put in echo. Now, to your point that you made before of could I just put this all on one line? Yeah, I could. But notice how I'm mimicking if I was going to do this by hand. That way it makes my PHP code more readable in my mind. And then I will have my NTR. And then I have the whole thing again. So echo simply means send this to the browser, output this HTML. Now what's going to be in the TR? I know at least there's going to be one TH for dollars. Likewise, I know that in this row, I'm going to have the value for dollars. Now, with our magic quotes here, we can pop that right in there. And again, because these are double quotes, it will take the value of the variable and stuff it in there. All right, now, as far as the rest of the columns go, the rest of the columns depend on whether we have checked the checkboxes or not. So, I'll go here, and I'm going to go and do this, and we could argue if it's good programming or not, but I'm going to go and I'm going to do all the calculations regardless of whether they're picked or not. In this case, it doesn't matter much because three little simple calculations like this will happen so quickly 
that even if I don't need to do it, if I did the calculation, who cares? All right. Now, should I put out a table header for euros? It depends. If it was selected, then I can echo out th like that. And I can do the same thing for the other two. creating our page on the fly based on what the user requested. The user doesn't want to see yen, they don't see yen. The user doesn't want to see pounds, they don't see pounds. In order to do that, of course, we need to know what the HTML is going to look like, right? Because we're writing a script to write the HTML. So for us to write the script to write the HTML, we need to know what the end result of the HTML looks like. In fact, a lot of times what will happen uh, when I've worked on these sort of projects in the past is someone, a graphic designer or someone, would hard code a table in, you know, with some just some dummy values. And then a programmer would go and sort of flesh it out and actually put the server-side script in to do the calculations. Okay, so that's sounds right for these things. Now we just need to do the outputting of the TDs and it's going to look a lot like this. If I picked euros, then I want to make a TD that contains the value of euros. If I pick yen, I want to make a TD that contains the value of yen. And finally, if I pick pounds, I want to make a TD that contains the value of pounds. All right, let's make sure that this works. So I'll save it. All right. And it does work. It doesn't look very good. Why not? Well, there's no CSS for it. All right. But the values are all correct. Let's go in and let's say that, okay, I don't want to see yen then I see just euros and pounds. And of course we could slap some styling on this to make it look nice.
we have something that looks like that, and at least looks reasonably good. All right. Now, what would we see, what would you expect to see if we did a view source? If we did a view source, remember, this has been processed through the server already. All right. And therefore, we're not going to see PHP code. We're going to see the result of the PHP code. So we're going to see what looks like a plain old HTML page that anyone would have coded by hand. If I do page source, I look, uh, I see that, and in fact, the table, although the table is coded correctly, everything appears on one line because I've outputted that to the browser um, a few characters at a time. All right, and I haven't put any breaks in the um, returns in the in the uh, in the code. All right, that's why sometimes if you look at the source of pages, you'll see that it's, it's extremely unreadable. Why? Well, a human didn't write that. A server-side script more than likely wrote it, and the server-side script I would trust was written and developed in a neat way, but the output that it produces won't necessarily be formatted. Um, in a very human readable way. All right. Now, this is one way to do this example. All right. I stayed in PHP the entire time. Notice. I could do it another way, where I bounce out of PHP and into HTML mode. All right, looking at the clock, trying to see if we have time to cover that today or not. Um, I don't want to talk about that right this moment. All right. But let, let me preview it. And, and then we will talk about it um, next time. One thing that you can do is you can pop in and out of HTML as often as you want. So what I could do is I could have my HTML for a table like this, and I could have here Like that. Okay? So if we were doing this, this is kind of what it would look like. What would this look like? Well, we would have a block of PHP to determine whether we were going to do that or not, whether we we're going to output that. And then we would close the if down here. So in a nutshell, we can pop into PHP, start an if statement, go out of PHP, have some static HTML, and then go back into PHP and, and close the if statement. All right. Which way is better? Well, that's just a, a matter of style which way you prefer. So to preview, um, we're going to go and we're going to talk about maybe doing this output, but sort of using this style of coding where we bounce back and forth between PHP and HTML. All right. The other thing we're going to talk about next time, um, I would imagine next time, definitely next week, is we're going to talk about functions and include files. All right. If you could imagine, if we were an organization that did uh, a lot of international business, currency conversion would be a big deal for us, right? And we would need to, we probably need to have that 
on every one of our pages. So we might have a price in our database stored in U.S. dollars, and then there'd be a conversion to convert it to other prices as needed. So therefore, it's likely that we would need these currency calculations on more than one page. Right now, these currency calculations live as part of this page, All right here. What we can do is we can separate those out. We can make our own functions for those currency calculations, and we can put them in a separate file, which is called an include file. And with an include file, you can reuse that file over and over and over, just like you can reuse the same CSS file on multiple web pages. So those will be the two things that we'll hit Monday, all right, um, as we go on with this example. Are there any questions? Can you go over the is set again? What does that exactly do? Is set is saying, is there a value on the query string with this name? Okay. Is there any value? So that just checks the query string? Well, I, I, I misspoke a little bit. It checks whatever is within the parentheses. Now, in this case, because I said dollar sign underscore get, it's referring to the query string. So is set doesn't always refer to the query string. Uh, it, is set simply says, does this have a value? Okay. And in this case, I'm looking at the element called euros on the query string, so it's asking if that is has a value. All right. Other questions? Yes. Yes, there is. There is, remember, and that will be another good thing for us to talk about, there is um, the method of get and the method of post. In addition, even if you didn't have a lot of them, if it was some, some sort of sensitive data like passwords or something like that, you wouldn't want, necessarily want that in the query string. So with the method of post, it gets passed and it's not visible. If you're going to use it in a different context, for example, I could create an HTML link that included stuff on the query string. All right, I could make ahref equals blah, 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 question mark, yen equals yes, and all that. I could hard code a link like that. So if I wanted my page to be accessed a couple different ways, I'd probably use the query string. Whereas if it was always going to be submitted via the form, then maybe I would use the, the post. For our case, I think it's valuable because it's valuable to see what's getting passed to the second page. And for that reason, I use the query string in most of my examples. All right. We'll see you over in lab.